Okay, I just got back from the dealership. I got new high pressure lines. They were um, 121 and 135 a piece. Um, they list for 150 and 169. Um, and then uh, I did get some uh, O-rings for the uh, fuel filter assembly. And then I got these O-rings. I actually had to go to another dealership to get these two O-rings all the way across Palm Beach County. $7.50 worth of O-rings that looked like they probably cost two cents to make. Thanks, Ford. Um, anyway, we're gonna get all these cleaned up. And uh, I found all the parts for this laying down in the valley. I don't even know how that was working. So we're gonna go ahead and clean up all that goop that was on there and, and clean up those uh, holes for those high pressure fit-ins. Replace all these seals on these hose. You can see that one was separating. So we're gonna get those parts cleaned up and the new seals on. Okay, I got this cleaned up as uh, much as I'm gonna get it cleaned up. And uh, I got the seals on. I put a little bit of oil to fill, facilitate them getting on a little easier. Um, and I also cleaned all the goop off of that. I used a uh, flat razor and a, and a little brass wire brush and I stuck a paper towel inside that hole before I started so none of the shit gets down in there. Um, and then looking at it, you would think that there'd be an O-ring in that groove, um, but I called the dealership to get it and he just said that uh, it calls for some silicone. So over here, I got all these parts cleaned up. Now I wasn't able, they didn't have a seal kit for this and um, I got tired of running around. I went to two different dealerships just to get the seals I got today. Um, but that should be okay. Um, I got these seals on with a little bit of uh, oil to help get them on there. And uh, I got all these parts, new hoses, and uh, I got the torque specs for everything. And um, I have a lot of torque specs in here. And then I wrote down some just for my information. And then I actually found online a nice um, breakdown of all, a whole bunch. And I'm actually gonna post them on here right after this. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this thing back together. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is install this into the high pressure oil pump. Now we're just gonna put it in, torque it down, and leave this stuff off until we get it in there. And um, this is actually uh, 35 foot pounds. I got my torque wrench facing the right direction. And I got it set to uh, 35. Oh, there we go. 35 and then the retaining clip which was laying in the valley is uh, 53 inch pounds so I got my inch pound torque wrench here set to 53 and then you're gonna need a special socket or a super deep socket now this is something that I torched out years ago when I originally changed that when I was uh, going through some other issues with the truck not even related to that I changed it thinking it was that and it wasn't and uh, as you can see the torch kind of got out of control there but um, here let me uh, set the bench cam up okay so if you don't have the right tool and you you cut the center out of your socket what's gonna happen is that's gonna stick down in there and you're only gonna be able to get about half of that ball in there but it'll be enough to torque it down so we're gonna go ahead and get that in i got the 
high pressure oil pump in the other vise and uh, we'll get that set up. Okay, now you don't want to be putting any type of uh, Loctite on this because that thing actually has that slot where I guess fuel or oil or whatever goes through there. So we're going to put it in there. And then uh, we'll get the socket on. As you can see, it uh, it's coming right up through. <clears throat> and then the, the torque wrench is just barely going to get in there. Let's see if we hopefully don't strip this. There it is. No more stripping. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put this in the gasket in the truck. We're gonna thread these on, but we're not gonna torque them down. Those actually get torqued down to 18 foot-pounds. But before we torque them down, we're just gonna get them in there, get it snugged. We're gonna line the gear up with this, which is uh, this bolt, the drive gear. And this gets torqued down to 95 foot-pounds. And you're probably gonna have to hold the crankshaft still. Otherwise, it'll start rotating the, the engine over. Um, once you get that torqued down, then you come back and torque these down to the uh, 18 foot-pounds. Okay, I got that in there. It's just hand tight and, uh, you know, it's snug up against there. And then down in there, you can see I got it centered on there. You can see the gear. Well, maybe not, but... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that bolt on and we're gonna torque that down to 95 foot pounds. Okay, I torqued it down. Now, what I did is I actually, instead of trying to get a nut way down there and messing around with that uh, crankshaft, I um, put the belt back on and then put my big crescent wrench on the uh, fan clutch nut and the belt actually gave it enough uh, friction to where I was able to get my uh, 90 foot pound, 95 foot pounds of torque. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, torque down the back bolts and then uh, get to the next step. Okay, I got the IRP valve back assembled and I torqued that down to 53 foot pounds, this nut back here. And I put a little bit of blue Loctite on it cause that thing came loose and was laying down there in the valley. So. The next step is we're going to put a little smoo on that and put that front cover back on. Okay, I got the plate back on. I torqued these 8 millimeter bolts down to um, 20 foot pounds. I actually used my inch pound because it's smaller. It came out to 240 inch pounds, the conversion. Um, I put this 5 8 uh, line back on, the sensor, and I also connected this sensor and that sensor and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting the fuel bowl back in okay we got them high pressure oil line quick connects torque down to 19 pounds we're gonna go ahead and put the lines on now, the lines are two different sizes the shorter one is gonna go from the front most fit in over to the driver's side and then the longer one's going to go from the back fitting all the way over there and they should just snap right in okay i just want to show you how easy these lines go on once you get them lined up they just snap into place and then you give them a little tug to make sure they're locked in and you're ready to go and then uh, pull this off and then uh, just slide it on there okay i got both the lines installed and I went ahead and installed the IRP clip, uh, the harness to it. And now we're gonna drop in the fuel bolt. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself with uh, putting that sensor in right there. I had to take it back out to get those two half inch bolts in. And what I did is I kinda put them in there, slightly got them on there, and then I went ahead and put all the lines on while everything was loose and I can maneuver stuff around. Now those lines aren't tight right now. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down to 23 foot pounds and then these lines basically you tighten them down until they bottom out okay I think we're done I went ahead and put the sensor back in I put the uh, coolant hose back on there 
Um, I tightened all the fittings. That one, I believe, was 5 8 There's a 3 quarter inch one below there. These ones are 9 16 uh, That was a half inch. And then put all your clips back on for all your sensors. And uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle the key a bunch of times to let this bowl fill up with fuel and uh, see if this thing starts. Okay, I almost forgot. We're going to have to put about maybe a quart of oil in there. Um, this is a 3 16 Allen to get that out. So you're just going to put the same motor oil as you put in the engine in there. So we're going to fill it up to about around an inch to the top. Okay, I sat here and cycled the key like 10 times to try to fill that fuel bowl. And we're going to see what happens. Oh, almost. Let's try again. I should have plugged this thing in and heated it up, but uh. That sounded kind of funny. Well, we're to check for leaks. I've had her running for a while. We got her up to temp. Nothing leaking. I, I put some degreaser on here to wash down all the oil. A little down there, but that's the reason we're freaking it out. I tried to dry most of it up, but uh, all that stuff down there is going to wash. Seems like it has better throttle response. Although it did seem like it was a little harder starting, even though it's warmed up. Running pretty smooth. but it seemed like it uh, taking a couple extra cranks to start up. Oh, not that time. Maybe I just needed to rub the shit out of it. All right, well, that concludes this episode of Project Shop. Uh, hopefully, we won't be doing any mess-up videos. Um, I hope we all learned a lesson from it. God bless you all, and have a great night.